Good morning. My name is Carl Rust, and I'm a member of the Board of Trustees. Well, I used to be. I'm the former president. I still am to win. Oh. I thought I was off the hook. Oh. Welcome to you all. The Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Elkhart is a welcoming community, encouraging religious freedom, nurturing individual spiritual and ethical growth, celebrating diversity, and promoting a just and sustainable world. If you'd like to learn more about this fellowship, please look at our website at uufe.org and join us after the service for potluck. Even if you didn't bring food, you can still hang around and eat. For the listening enjoyment of all, we ask at this time to please turn off your cell phones or put them on silent. Also, if you need hearing support, please ask at the sound desk. So we started a little tradition a while back of after the board meeting, board president comes in and kind of fills you in on what happened. And we're gonna continue that. Pam is our new, not yet, but will be our new president. And um, we do have some new members on the board. So the, uh, I think I got this right. So Pam, Ken, Taylor, Chadwick, Lorna, Laura, President-elect, Linda and Dwight will be your board. So those are the people that you can yell at. Don't yell at me anymore. I don't, at least not, you can until the end of June, I guess. But I'm going to be in New York next week, so. Um, oh, the board meeting. Let's see. Well, honestly, we didn't do a whole lot. It was kind of a light agenda. And um, we did talk about our search for ministers progressing. We've got a profile up online now. Candidates can see it. They can contact us if they're interested. So we'll keep you informed on that. Um, that was really, that was the main thing we did. We, we signed up for board opening. That was about it. So enjoy the service today. we got a lot going on. Uh, at the end, we're going to do a familiar song. We changed a few of the words. I've listened to dozens of versions of this song, and I picked the ones that I liked. So feel free to sing along, but just be aware it might be a little bit different. Good morning. I'm Judy Darnell, and I have our fellowship life. And I had a special announcement that Janelle asked me to make, and I can't find what she wrote. But in essence, she said that our good friend Miles Penninger, who presented in January, uh, has been occupied, we know, first with tax season and then with the illness of his mother. And his mother has just passed away. Her name was jo uh, Rose Willis. And so, uh, I would imagine that cards would be welcome. So, um, so, okay. Okay, the address will be in the next update. So, okay, so, so, but this is a busy morning and our June, with all of the activities going on here. So the Juneteenth commemoration has been reduced to the following. Elkhart will be celebrating Juneteenth tomorrow, uh, the 19th from 48 p.m at the historic Roosevelt Center Park located at 1508 Prairie Street. The theme this year is unity and the event will feature black authors from across the country, both remote and in person, plus live food, well, food and live performances. Okay, I'm sure the food is prepared appropriately. <laughs> Science and Society meets Tuesday at two to view and discuss a 60 minutes piece on the future of artificial intelligence. Next Tuesday, the 27th, the program is a documentary on how artificial intelligence is already changing society. And the UUFE Cups group will celebrate uh, Lanasa on Saturday the 29th. I'm sure they will assemble at 5 o'clock as usual with, for a shared meeting and ritual. Last week's attendance was 76 adults and children in person, online, and on YouTube. 
Our collection was $149, which was shared with church community services. And now Karen Kite has an announcement. First of all, I'm not a public speaker. Um, I just wanted to let everyone know that the uh, blessing bag giveaway that we did down at the plaza for the homeless, it was an amazing experience. There's no advertisement for this. We just show up, set up the tables. We put together 61 blessing bags and gallon bags, which in, in it was fruit cup, pudding cup, applesauce, spoon, roughly three to four, like breakfast or granola bars. And then on our tables, we had everything you could think of. We had one table that had trays of just protein food. There was tuna salad, chicken salad with the crackers, packets of the tuna salad. And I was totally amazed that how polite everyone was. We had the church that we were working with was Augustana. Their experience with this. And they even had some clothes. We just set them out around this planner. And I really couldn't understand how everybody's going to know. But they do. And they all tell each other. And there was a kid, kid about 25. He was very gracious and very consider it and he wanted he said i wish my brother was here i says is your brother homeless too yes but i don't know where he's at right now he left he came back about a half hour and had his twin brother with him we only had one pair of used tennis shoes and a mother daughter team who had been visiting and helping themselves they came back with this young guy from i think he was 20 from honduras there was one pair of tennis shoes there. He went over and tried them on. He was so excited. He literally, literally was doing flips and like break dancing. Um, we will be having another blessing bag event in October. And because of the season, and I'd like to collect like some clothes, jackets, coats, whatever you can spare. But, um, it was an amazing experience, and we're going to do it again. Okay, as many of you know, I have been the Sunday school department, and this year we have learned about many things in Sunday school. We learned a bit about the people in our church and the visitors who came to us and shared stories and activities and taught us about the building and grounds and the money that we need to keep the church going and why we need the church and the money. We also discussed ways that we can be comfortable for our church. Thank you, Carl. Okay, so we've also discussed ways that we can be helpful around the church no matter what our age. We have read and discussed many stories and completed many activities that support the stories, each with each month having a theme. Our theme centered on being kind and loving and helpful, and we also observed quite a number of holidays. If you attended our Halloween party, you may have noticed the haunted house decorations that the children made. In November, we discussed gratitude and made the Thanksgiving tree and invited the rest of the congregation to add things on the little leaves that you're grateful for. Discovered, and excuse me, in December we discussed the winter holidays, learning about Hanukkah and playing the dreidel game. Everybody won. Then we turned to Christmas fun and made a nativity figures and a shepherd and some fl very fluffy sheep, and we also learned about Kwanzaa. Other holidays included Ramadan, when we discussed the importance of altruism, and made this good deed change uh, with all the things that we've you know, done the previous week. So we, we did that over the course of several weeks to encourage 
you know, the continuation of good deeds. And we learned about the story of Passover and participated in the, the pagan or, um, oriented decoration of eggs in the search for them. And we made Mother's Day gifts. Okay. 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 These little sun catchers. And we made some Father's Day gifts that fathers don't know much about yet. So, because, you know, our parents are very important people. And now I would like to recognize all the people who made this possible. Okay, Carson's not here. We'll mail that to him. Okay. Juniper. You can get your certificate and get your Father's Day present. You, you can sit down there again until we're all done up here, okay? Okay. Brooklyn. Trey. Okay. And oh, oh, there's Xander, we'll mail his as well. And Bristol. Okay. John. What's that? Okay. I have to I have to have it written down. I don't want to forget anything. Judy, in recognition of and thanks for your tireless efforts each Sunday morning to present meaningful educational and fun activities for our children participating in the religious education program. UUF Eve would like to present you with this corsage. You're going to put it on or shall I? You shall. <laughs> you have given up being in the service yourself to enrich Sunday mornings for these youngsters. They have certainly appreciated your time and talent, and the congregation has too. Thank you, Julie. If I could have Juniper and Trey and Bristol come up here for, for, and Brooklyn as well. So we're going to do, wait a minute, okay. Brooklyn, I need everybody. Juniper, Juniper, Trey and Bristol come up here. I'd like you to ring the gong. Juniper, you start. We practice this, remember? Okay. We light this gong, or you ring the gong three times. Go ahead. Once for those who came before and made a place for us. Now you stay up here. Okay, Bristol. Once for those who came or who are here now. Trey, 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 Trey. I need you. Guess we didn't practice this enough. Come ring the gong. And once for those who will come after us and build on the dream. Thank you. And now we're going to light the chalice, Bristol. Okay, come light the chalice. Okay, and the chalice reading today is on the little half sheet you should have. And if you could re respond back with the black words, please, the ones that highlight it. Okay, we light this chalice to remind ourselves of four things. To treat people kindly because they are our brothers and sisters. To take good care of the earth because it is our home. To, take, uh, to be honest in our words and actions. Because we need to know what is true. And to look for beauty and rejoice. Because life is a great gift. 
We didn't have the candle snuffer when we were practicing in Sunday school. We had to blow that out. So, okay. Okay. All righty. And now we're going to say our covenant in unison. And if you don't know it, it is printed on your order of service. And okay. Crystal, you get it started. Remember the word you say? The spirit of this church and services its law to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. This is our covenant. Thank you. Just Helping My Dad by Mercer Mayer. Yay! Dad is home today. I will help my dad do things. Wake up, Dad, I say. We have work to do. sleepy. I make breakfast for him all by myself. Oh, uh... I am helping dad. I cut the grass. Oops, the mower got away. Sorry, dad, I say. Oh, no. I washed the car just for Dad. Uh. Who left the windows open? I can paint. But Dad has to finish. I see a bee's nest. I will fix it, Dad. I call. Dad is yelling something. Run, Dad yells. Whoa. Run! I run fast. Whoa! We go to town, just Dad and me. We buy gas. I say, Dad, can pump gas. Dad pumps the gas. We go to the store. I get stuff for Dad. Too much, Dad? I ask. Dad needs a new hammer. This hammer really works. Sorry about the nails, I say. We get a parking ticket. Dad does not look happy. Dad says, I'm not mad, just not happy. I say, that's fair, Dad. We go home. Mom says, the toilet is broken. I will fix it, I say. I can't fix it. I call dad. I forgot to turn off the hose. Whoa. I say, that's okay, dad. Grass wants water. Ah. We have dinner. Then dad and I watch a movie. <laughs> dad is tired. It's time to sleep. Dad tucks me in. Did I help you, Dad? I ask. Dad says, yes, you did. Thank you. What a great day! 
just helping my dad. This is not in your order of service, but before we do the offertory, I'm going to ask Pam to come up and say a few words. Good morning. From the basement and all the work that was that goes into uh, fixing the basement to new roof and the shingles to the parking lot to work in the learning center. Pardon. To everything else. <clears throat> Excuse me, Chuck is giving me directions here, but I'm ignoring him <laughs> to <laughs> to filling everything to come to to repairing everything that needs to be repaired to the memorial garden to the landscaping to helping with policies. Mike, we will miss you. Please come up here. <clears throat> You and Judy have been instrumental and we're going to miss you guys and just in case you might want to read a book <clears throat> in your spare time. There's a uh, certificate for Barnes and Noble from the congregation. Thank you. Um, I'm just thinking of the box that the box that the box that the box that the now I mean I can start to rebuild it. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Oh, thank you very much. You are very welcome. <laughs> I think you should take a picture. Yes. Take a picture. Thank you. Well, in addition to um, Judy's corsage and Mike's gift card, we have a wooden heart for each of them. And during the offering, we would like to pass it through the congregation. Everybody, pre please press your love into these wooden hearts for them to take with them and know how much we miss them. Every Sunday we take up an offering that we share with an agency that has values similar to ours. And this Sunday our offering will be in support of Habit is it Habitat for Humanity? I hope. There's no order of service up here. I thought I had one up here. It is. Habitat for Humanity. So please give generously, which we'll share with them and ourselves. Thank you.
338 in your regular hymnal is a new one, so Lizzie's going to play it through once all the way through, and then we'll sing the three verses. Would you stand, if you're willing and able, to sing? 338. My father taught me how to skip stones. I remember watching with amazement as he would make a stone skip six, seven, eight times. It seemed like magic defying the laws of nature. He showed me how to select the best, the flat stone and spin it as his hand, in his hand as he tossed it into the water. I tried hard and eventually I could make one skip one whole time. <laughs> Over the years, I got much better, and my personal best is 11. I still skip stones sometimes, always thinking of my dad. I've known my father all my life, and most of his, so he has had a lot of time to teach me some lessons. Some he taught directly, like skipping stones and how to play cribbage and how to beat him. Uh, but more was taught by modeling what I witnessed in him, what he showed to me and how he lived. Here are some of the other skills and knowledge that I learned from him. He taught me how to fish. We had cane poles and canned kernel corn was our bait when I caught my first fish, a rainbow trout at age or he taught me that I'm smart and talented. I don't know how I figured that out. He taught me a lot of great songs like, do your 
ears hang low? Do they wobble to and fro? Can you tie them in a knot? Can you tie them in a bow? Can you throw them over your shoulder like a continental soldier? Do your ears hang low? I see we, we might need to do that in a course sometime here. <laughs> Yay. He taught me that people can be of great help to others, even while they themselves are struggling. He taught me some origami of which he is a master. He's a master of paper folding and he made these earrings. Uh, I used to make all kinds of origami creatures and really enjoyed it. I still remember how to make a paper cup. I'll, I'll show you after the service if you want. He taught me that having fun was a good thing, especially with the family. And we were a fun family. He taught me how to tell a great story, how to make it alive and how to reach people. His storytelling and creating is legend in our family and beyond. We kids became really good at telling stories, but none of us was or ever will be nearly as good at creating them. He has wonderful fashion sense. That is, he taught me how to have sense in thinking about how I dress. For example, on his days off when I was growing up, they were Thursdays, he would often don this outfit, clay colored paint spattered Bermuda shorts, a white muscle shirt, white calf socks, and brown ankle boots. And he would actually go out in public wearing that. And he wasn't influenced by my humiliation about what others think. He said, people that know me know I can look better. And people who don't, I don't care. From about the age of seven, I learned from him that people are mind, body, and spirit, all three, and all three are connected. That was how I started understanding how people were put together. So many years later, when people in my field began talking about the mind-body connection, I was thinking, duh. <laughs> he taught me how to make clover chains, you know, clover. Later, I taught my friends, and I remember once in second grade, we all made a clover chain together that stretched <coughs> all the way across the entire playground. He taught me how to be comfortable in the spotlight. And I got very good at that. It took me a little longer to learn how not to be in the spotlight. <clears throat> he convinced me that not knowing where we were going did not mean that we were lost. It just meant we were exploring. And sometimes we would go exploring for several hours. There were some things he could not or did not teach me. He did not teach me how to spell. He was and still is a terrible speller. He didn't teach me to be afraid of tornadoes. I can still see the image of that tornado moving across Memphis that afternoon. We kids were outside on our swing set watching while my father filmed it. We all survived. I never heard one lesson from him about men being superior to women. And he taught me nothing about how to ridicule others or how to be racist. He taught me to welcome others into the circle. He taught me that if I called out in the night, he would be there. He taught me how to cry. And I strive to embody everything he showed me, which was everything I would ever need to know about unconditional love. Our musical interlude this morning, Lilac City, grew from what many would say is an example about the power of the arts in education and we thank Mike Darnell for bringing this to our notice. 
Some years ago, the director of the Poetry Center at Kent State University served two 10-week residencies at an elementary school in Ohio. One second grade girl named Kathy did not finish a poem or even speak in class for 18 of those 20 weeks. Until after her class had a creative brainstorming session about spring. Kathy then wrote her first completed poem and read it in front of her class, speaking for the first time in that 20 week program. Soon after, that intern and a colleague took Kathy's first lines and turned them into a song. Later, she read her poem to a whole school assembly, which was followed by her entire class breaking into Lilac City. We decided that this was a perfect sharing for Flower Communion Sunday. Our Unitarian Universalist faith includes the principles of inclusivity, diversity, and the celebration of individual journeys. Flower Communion embodies these principles, honoring our unique selves, while acknowledging the beauty that emerges when our individual stories come together. The origins of the Flower Communion can be traced back to 1923, 100 years ago, and Reverend Dr. Norbert Chopek a Unitarian minister in Czechoslovakia during the early 20th century. In a time of social and political unrest, Dr. Chapek sought to create a ritual that would unite and uplift his congregation, transcending differences and fostering a sense of community. Dr. Chapek envisioned a service where each individual would bring a flower representing their own uniqueness and personal journey. In the act of exchanging flowers, the congregation would symbolically share their joys, sorrows, and experiences with one another. The diverse array of flowers would come together to create a beautiful bouquet representing the beauty of unity in diversity. 
Flowers hold a special place in our lives and have a profound impact on all of our human sensory senses. Their vibrant colors captivate our sight, inviting us to marvel at their delicate petals, intricate patterns, and graceful forms. As we exchange flowers in our flower communion in a few minutes, let us take a moment to see and appreciate the beauty and splendor in front of us. The fragrance of flowers fills the air, awakening our sense of smell. Each flower carries its own unique scent, evoking memories and emotions. As we exchange flowers, let us inhale deeply, allowing the sweet and earthy aromas to come into ourselves and remind us of the beauty of the world that we inhabit. When we touch a flower, we encounter its delicate texture, the softness of petals, the smoothness of leaves, and the gentle prick of a thorn. Through touch, we connect with the tactile wonders of nature. As we exchange flowers, let us feel the petals against our skin, sensing the tender presence of one another and acknowledging the interconnectedness of our human experiences. Flowers also speak to our sense of taste. Some flowers, such as lavender or rose petals, are used in culinary creations, bringing unique and special flavors to dishes. In the act of exchanging flowers, let us imagine the subtle hints of taste that they carry, savoring the richness. Lastly, let us not forget the impact of flowers on our sense of sound, yes. When the wind rustles through a field of wildflowers or bees buzz amidst a garden, we are serenaded by nature's symphony. Part of their song might be a whisper, suggesting we are as beautiful as the flowers. As we exchange flowers, let us listen attentively, attuning our ears to the gentle whispers of the natural world. Flowers are beautiful. And perhaps they'll say to you, you're beautiful too. Did you hear that? Did you? I can't believe that. Wow. Today as we engage our own you. <laughs> okay, you can stop now. You can stop now. Don't, don't look at the guy behind the curtain. As we, exchange, as we exchange flowers, let us open our hearts to the beauty and sustain, uh, to the beauty and wisdom that sustains each of us. Let us recognize the importance of embracing diversity and sensory experiences, for it is in this tapestry of differences that our, two strengths lie, our true strength lies. Blessed be and amen. Janiel, would you lead our flower communion now, please? For Father's Day, combined with flower communion, combined with joys and sorrows, we will not be sharing joys and sorrows today, but joys and flowers. When you come to choose the flower that someone else has brought for you today, you may also, if you wish, go to the microphone, state your name, and say one thing that you learned from your father fig or father figure, something you appreciate about, appreciate about him, or something you are proud of your father or father figure for. Then choose a stone or shell to drop in the water. Of course, you may also do this in silence. Please line up on your right side of the table to move across. This is written as a round, but we're not going to do that because we don't know this. So uh, Lizzie's going to play it one time, 
and then we will sing it twice, okay, all the way through. Stay standing for the benediction, and then be seated for a wonderful postlude. <laughs> Oh, it's in the teal hymn, I'm sorry, 105. <laughs> Fathers and father figures and flowers bring much joy to our lives. And yet, like a rose thorn, sometimes our fathers and our father figures have may caused us a little pain. But it is not without the fact that the love that they bring and the beauty that they bring to us is worth it all. Go in peace. Amen. Go! 
Lovers pick them every 